Welcome to the Great Detectives of Old Time Radio. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham. If you have a comment, email it to me, box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and check us out on Instagram, instagram.com slash greatdetectives. If you're enjoying the podcast, please follow us using your favorite podcast software. If you've not already, I do encourage you to pick up my novel, Slime Incorporated. It was my first mystery novel, and it's a story of murder and dirty politics set against the backdrop of an Idaho gubernatorial election. It's a modern detective drama with a lot of nods to classic detective stories. And you can find Slime Incorporated as a paperback or ebook at most online retailers, as well as an audiobook through audible.com or the Apple Store, as well as on my website at store.greatdetectives.net. Now it's time for this week's episode of Mr. Chameleon. The original air date, February 9th, 1948, and the title is The Case of the Marriage of Death. Next, Mr. Chameleon and The Case of the Marriage of Death. Tonight, we again present the famous Mr. Chameleon of Central Headquarters in his most famous cases of crime and murder, brought to you by the makers of genuine Bayer Aspirin. Now let me tell you just who Mr. Chameleon is. A college man, he tried from childhood to live up to the name he bore, Chameleon, by taking on the color of whatever situation in which he found himself, appearing in endless guises, finally entering the police force where he became known as Chameleon, the man of many faces, the underworld's most dreaded man. The listener invariably knows who Mr. Chameleon is no matter which disguise he assumes, but the criminal he's tracking down seldom does. Tonight we give you Mr. Chameleon in The Case of the Marriage of Death. Some marriages lead to happiness, others to misunderstanding, sorrow, and divorce. But few lead to murder. And little do Pierre Coudre and his bride of less than half an hour know that theirs will be truly a marriage of death. Now as the scene opens, we find Pierre and his bride Tina in Tina's own room in her father's home. Luggage packed all about them, ready for their wedding journey. And we hear Pierre saying, Darling, my darling, at last we are alone. Now for your first kiss, says Mrs. Pierre Coudre. Take your hands away from me, Pierre. You know why I married you. You know what our understanding was as well as I do. Do you think I meant that, Tina? Come here. Stay away from me, Pierre. I assure you, you can't make a fool of me. Let go of me. Stop that, Tina. Stop it, I tell you. Scratch my eye out. Get away from me or I... He's dead. He's dead. Tina, what in heaven's name? What's happened? Pierre has been shot. He's dead. Tina. I didn't kill him, Father. I didn't kill him. A few minutes later, Mr. Chameleon, the underworld's most feared man, the clever and urbane detective from Central Police Headquarters enters the murder room and speaks to the bride's father, Carlisle Wentworth. You are Carlisle Wentworth? I'm chameleon of the police. Yes. 
This is an unbelievable thing, Mr. Chameleon. Yes, most murders are. Whose body is this? Pierre Coudray's. Married less than an hour ago to your daughter. Who killed him? I have no idea. Who was in the room with him when he was shot? Why, why, no one except... Except your daughter, you were about to say, Mr. Winthrop. What are you leading to? You don't think she killed him? Do you? Now listen, Chameleon. If you think you're being an officer of the law or gives you license to persecute people... Mr. Wentworth, I am here to ask questions and get answers. So I repeat, do you believe your daughter killed her husband? Certainly not. She couldn't have. She was here alone with him when he was killed. Who else could have done it? I've no idea. All I know is that my daughter, Tina, didn't. All right. Tell me exactly what happened. I heard shots. Heard my daughter scream. Mm -hmm. I opened the door and saw Pierre lying there dead. Where's the gun that killed him? The gun? I didn't see any. Who besides your daughter and yourself was in this room after the murder? And did anyone come into the room and leave it? We were the only ones in the room, and nobody left it, Mr. Chameleon. Where's your daughter now, Mr. Wentworth? I took her into another room, the one adjoining this. So both of you left the room together. And neither Tina nor I took the gun. I tell you, I never even saw a gun. So if you think A that... gun was used to kill this man, and somebody took it. I must say, the situation is very strange. I've got men surrounding the house, Mr. Chameleon. Not a soul tried to leave it. Well, I didn't think anyone would, Dave. Mr. Wentworth, this is Detective Sergeant Arnold. Oh, yes. Yeah. Mr. Wentworth, will you please take me to your daughter? Right through this door, Mr. Chameleon. But I don't think she's up to talking to anyone well, now. But she is talking to someone now. I hear her. But I know, Clarissa, the police will say that I killed Pierre. Don't be silly, Tina, darling. Just keep your head and tell the truth. The truth, Clarissa. The truth. I simply can't. You don't know what you're saying. Tina, dear, this is Mr. Chameleon, the famous detective. Mr. Chameleon. How do you do? I tell you, I didn't kill Pierre. I don't know what happened. Of course she didn't, Mr. Chameleon. Tina couldn't kill anybody. It's ridiculous to think she did. I haven't said yet that I thought she did, Miss... Uh, Clarissa Walters. Uh, Clarissa Walters. Yes, I remember. You were Tina's bridesmaid. And my best friend, Mr. Chameleon. Now, Mr. Wentworth, I'll ask you and Miss Walters to leave the room while I talk to Tina. But I think I should be with my daughter, Mr. Chameleon. You can see Tina's all to pieces. Don't be worried, Father. I'm not afraid of Mr. Chameleon. That's the right spirit, Tina. Oh, um... I'll see you in a minute, Mr. Wentworth and Miss Clarissa. Very well. The whole thing happened in a second, Mr. Chameleon. It was the first time we'd been alone since the wedding. And Pierre held out his arms and said he was going to kiss me for the first time as Mrs. Coudray. And then? It was terrible. I heard two shots and Pierre fell dead. He hardly even moved. Then my father ran into the room. How old was your husband? How old? Yes, how old? From the uh, quick look I had at his body, I'd say between 45 and 50. He was 47. And you are about 20, Miss Tina. It's not often that a girl of 20 falls in love with a man of 47. Well, I did. He was a wonderful person. I never thought of his age. Perhaps you thought of his money. His money? Why, I The never... gossip columns referred to him as the fabulously rich Frenchman, Pierre Coudray. I married him because I loved him. It was really my first love affair. I thought I read about a year ago that you were engaged to young Ted Gordon. Oh, Ted. That was just a silly boy and girl affair, Mr. Chameleon. Ted's in the house somewhere now. Father invited him to the wedding, and mm -hmm. so did I. He's, he's almost like a brother to me, really. He wouldn't give me a second look now. Uh, without attempting to compliment you, that is very difficult to believe. Now, suppose we get away from social chatter, Tina, and get down to a few facts. Facts? What do you mean? I mean that I don't believe you and Ted Gordon are like brother and sister. What? I mean that from the very way you speak of Ted Gordon, you are in love with him. I'm not. And everybody in town knows that he is in love with you. They don't know what they're talking about. What happened between your husband, Pierre Coudray, and yourself when you came back to this house from the wedding? Nothing. Nothing. Did you quarrel? Did realization come to you that you had given up Ted Gordon, whom you loved, for a middle-aged Frenchman who was rich? No, no, no. And then no. something snapped in your mind. Everything went blank. You couldn't bear the thought of being his wife, and so you shot him to death. Is that what happened? We did quarrel. He was ghastly, a brute, but I didn't kill him. I didn't kill him, I did Where was Ted Gordon when you were quarreling with your husband? Did he overhear you? I don't know where Ted was. I know, though, that he didn't kill Pierre. Well, somebody did, and I propose finding out who. <laughs> Tina, I advise you to think things over for a while with this thought in mind. You are not clever enough to fool the police. Well, when I see you again, I shall expect a very complete story of your relations with Pierre, the man you married, and with Ted Gordon, the man you didn't. Oh, here you 
are, Dave. Did you get anything out of the bride, Tina, Mr. Chameleon? Plenty, Dave. I'll tell you later. Did you see a chap named Gordon in the house? I'll say I did. He almost knocked me over trying to get out of the house. Oh? He demands a lawyer. Says you were giving Tina the third degree. And I told him the first thing a criminal asks for when the cop gets him is a lawyer. Well, Dave, you know I studied law. Maybe I will do. Bring Ted Gordon to me. Uh, half a sec, Mr. Chameleon. I've got a cop holding him outside this door. Right. Holy, You've bring in Mr. No Gordon. Right hold me here. You can't do this to me. I demand my rights. I want a lawyer. Ted Gordon, don't act like an idiot. All I want are answers to a few questions. What are the questions? Where were you when Pierre Coudray was murdered? I was coming up the stairs to tell Tina and Pierre goodbye. The stairs leading to the hall outside the murder room? They're the only stairs in the front part of the house. It was pretty tough for you, wasn't it, Ted, when uh, Tina married Pierre Coudray? If you're implying I was in love with Tina, the answer is yes. And love and jealousy go hand in hand. All right, then I was jealous. Where did you hide the murder gun? The murder gun? Oh, so that's the trick, is it? Well, write this in your book, Chameleon. I never saw the gun. Do you own a thirty-eight automatic? What? Why, yes. I've got a permit for it. Where is it now, Gordon? It, it's in my bureau drawer at home. You sure it is? Of course I'm sure. Tell you what I'm going to do, Gordon. I'm going to send you back to your house with a policeman. If you bring the gun back here to me, that lets you out. Shall I go with him, Mr. Chameleon? No, Dave. Send Foley. I want you to stay here. Hey, Foley. Yeah? Go with this man to his apartment. He'll give you a thirty-eight automatic. Bring him and the gun back here. Straight away, Detective Sergeant Arnold. All right, Mr. Gordon. Foley will run you out there in the squad car. Well, that was a nasty curve you pitched him, Mr. Chameleon. I'll bet 50 to 1 Foley will bring him back without the gun. Uh, don't be so careless with your money, Dave. Now I want to have a few words with the bridesmaid, Miss Clarissa, another ardent protester of the bride's innocence. But the question is, will she protest Ted Gordon's innocence as strongly? Don't be afraid, Miss Clarissa, to tell Mr. Chameleon everything you know. He's the nicest and most understanding guy in the world. That's just what I thought about him when I met him with Tina a little while ago, Detective Sergeant Arnold. He's just as anxious to find the innocent party in a murder case as he is to find the guilty one. In fact, he's got a motto hanging over his desk at headquarters, winding up with, The Innocent Must Be Protected. He sounds awfully nice. Oh, here you are, Dave and Miss uh, Clarissa. Come in. Detective Arnold's been saying some terribly nice things about you, Mr. Chameleon. Oh? About how you don't care nearly so much about finding a person who killed somebody as you do about finding somebody who didn't. <coughs> <coughs> what? Uh, <coughs> yes. Wonderful reputation for a cop, isn't it? Of course, Dave is very fond of me. Thanks a lot, old man. But, Mr. Chameleon, Yes, I the didn't... commissioner of police will be delighted to know this about me, I'm sure. Now, Miss Clarissa, have you any ideas about this murder? For one thing, Mr. Chameleon, I'm sure Tina had no part in it. She's simply not that kind. Yes, so you told me before, Miss Clarissa. Everybody loves her, Mr. Chameleon. I can't understand why anybody would try to harm her like... Like whom? Please don't ask me. I, I don't want to put anyone in a bad light. And besides, there may be an excuse for it that I don't know anything about. I think you'd better tell me, Miss Clarissa. Well... It's about Tina's father. Carlisle Wentworth. Do you mean that you think he killed Pierre Coudray? He literally forced Tina to marry Pierre. She told me only day before yesterday that she couldn't go through with it. Oh, Mr. Chameleon, I was so sorry for her. And I even went to Pierre and... And uh, what, Clarissa? Well, I, I... I told him he'd never be happy with Tina and he... He said that uh, it was none of your business, wasn't that it, Clarissa? Yes, that's exactly it, Mr. Chameleon. And what did you tell him? I told him he was a fool, an old fool. To think of his marrying a 20-year-old girl, he at 47. Well, he acted terribly then. He went into a rage. Told me to mind my own business. Uh, yes, well, there's no point in working yourself up about it now. It's all in the past. And Pierre is dead. Yes, dead. And it's a good thing he is. You hated him, didn't you, Clarissa? I, I only hated him for what he was doing to Tina. How long have you known Tina? About a year, I think. I met her at a party when I first visited New York. New York isn't your home, then. Where did you live? Oh, Pittsburgh is my home. Oh, 
Do you ever know a family named Burton there? They're quite uh, prominent socially. I was shocked to hear that they'd been killed in the motor accident. Oh, yes, I knew them, Mr. Chameleon. In fact, I last saw them the week before the accident. How long did you know the murdered man, Pierre Coudray, before he became engaged to Tina Carlyle? Oh, I didn't know him at all. I'd never met him before. You sure? Are you trying to trick me into something? No. No, not at all. I'm simply a policeman asking questions. Well, I'm not here to be insulted or to have my word. Who's that? Oh, come in, Foley. Oh, Mr. Chameleon, here's your man Gordon, and not hiding a hair of a gun in his apartment. What did I tell you, Mr. Chameleon? All right, Dave, all right. Ted Gordon, now what have you got to say about that gun? The gun that you told me was in your apartment. Mr. Chameleon, I left that gun in my apartment, and I believe it's still there. It was a 38 caliber gun, the exact caliber used to murder Pierre Coudray, the man who married the girl that you love. So you killed Pierre. That's just what I suspected. Mr. Chameleon, I saw Ted Gordon sneak up the stairway and put his hand on the knob of the door to the room where Pierre was murdered. In love with Tina, was he? Well, I tell you, he murdered Pierre, and he's trying to pin his crime on Tina. Be quiet, Liz, or I'll start talking. Don't think I don't know all about you and Pierre. Don't let him fool you, Mr. Chameleon. He's the murderer. Mr. Chameleon, you must believe me. I left that gun in my apartment. If it's gone, somebody stole it, and... And I think I know who. Who? I want to be sure it's stolen before I say. Let me go back and look for it again. On my honor, whether I find it or not, I'll come back to you. And give me the gun, or tell me whom you think stole it, right? On my honor, Mr. Chameleon, I will. In one hour, I'll expect you at Central Police Headquarters. With the gun, with the name of the person you say you believe stole it, or... With your confession. I'll be there. In the meanwhile, don't believe anything this scatterbrained idiot Clarissa tells you. She doesn't know what she's talking about. Mr. Chameleon and the case of the marriage of death continues in just a moment. When you're suffering with an ordinary headache, neuritic, or neuralgic pain, you want two things. First, you want something that will give you fast relief. And second, you want something that will give you dependable relief. So listen. People everywhere know that because it's actually ready to go to work in two seconds, Bayer Aspirin provides fast relief. And they know that because it's gentle to the system, it also provides dependable relief. The fact is that Bayer Aspirin has been used by millions of normal people without ill effect a record no other pain reliever can match. And that means that of all pain relievers, Bayer Aspirin is one you can take with complete confidence. So when you have a headache, don't experiment with drugs that have not been proved by years of successful use. For the two most important kinds of relief, the fast relief you want and the dependable relief you need, do as millions do. Be sure with Bayer Aspirin. When you buy, ask for it by its full name, Bayer Aspirin, not just for aspirin alone. Get the 100-tablet bottle, and you get Bayer Aspirin tablets for less than a penny apiece. Now back to Mr. Chameleon in The Case of the Marriage of Death, the case in which Pierre Coudray was murdered less than an hour after his marriage to the glamorous Tina Wentworth, whose friend, Clarissa Walters, has told Mr. Chameleon she is certain Ted Gordon, Tina's former fiancé, is the murderer. We find Mr. Chameleon talking now to Carlyle Wentworth, the bride's father. You may as well settle down, Mr. Wentworth, and answer the questions I ask you. I've heard you say I don't know anything about it, often enough. I say again, Chameleon, I don't know anything about the murder. Why did you force your daughter, Tina, to marry Pierre Caudray? I didn't force her. Stop lying, Wentworth. Everybody I've talked to in this case has told me that you forced Tina into a repulsive marriage. It's a dirty business for a father. I'll admit I encouraged the marriage, but force it? How the devil could I do that? What hold did Pierre Coudray have on you? Answer that one first. No hold that's any of your business, Chameleon. You will tell me what hold Coudray had on you, what threat he used to force a marriage with your daughter, or I will arrest Tina right now and charge her with a murder. There's enough evidence against her to make any jury convict her. You can't mean that, Chameleon. You know dashed well Tina didn't kill him. All right. When your daughter stands convicted of murder, it will be to save your own hide, Wentworth. That is the ticket that you're writing for her. That filthy swine, Coudray, planted a bogus theft on me. A theft of over $100,000 of his securities. That's what it was. It sounds absurd. 
I'd plant a theft of $100,000 on you. You don't believe it. Nobody would. But the swine got into a stock deal with me. Worked it out in this house one night. The next day, I opened the drawer of my desk and found $101,000 treasury bonds staring me in the face. And then what? Kudre burst into the room with a private detective. Accused me of stealing the bonds from him. He'd showed them to me the day before, and of course, my fingerprints were all over them. And then Kudre's detective threatened to arrest you. Kudre intervened for a price, of course. Oh, what a fool you were, Wentworth. My daughter Tina found out about it, and when Kudre asked her to marry him, she agreed. And when she married him, you killed him. I didn't kill him. I didn't. The man I think killed him was Ted Gordon. He was so insanely jealous. The boy was wild with jealousy, chameleon. And a short time later, back at police headquarters, Mr. Chameleon is saying to the commissioner of police... So, there is the story, Commissioner. Clarissa Walters has convinced Ted Gordon's the murderer, and so is Carlyle Wentworth, the bride's father. And Carlyle Wentworth forced his daughter into marrying Pierre Coudray. Do you think he could have done it, Chameleon? It's possible. It seems so. The next question is, did the bride Tina herself do it? Because she was in love with a very attractive young man like Ted Gordon. It's a facer, all right, Chameleon. The murder weapon is still missing, eh? Well, in five minutes, it may not be missing, Commissioner. I have a pretty powerful belief in Ted Gordon's word of honor. I believe that he will come into this office with the gun, or that... Just a minute. Right. Hello? What's that? Ted Gordon, you say? Wait a second, Dave. Million, it's Dave Arnold for you. Oh, thanks. Yes, Dave? A call just came in from the 12th Precinct. The superintendent of the apartment where Ted Gordon lives has reported that Gordon has been shot, murdered. Where are you, downstairs? Yes, sir. Hop into a squad car and get out there instantly to Ted Gordon's apartment, Dave. Aren't you coming with me, Mr. Chameleon? No, you cover everything out there. Meet me back at the Wentworth house when you finish there. So Ted Gordon got a two, Chameleon? Yes, Commissioner, and I am responsible for that boy's death. Can I ever forgive myself for letting him go back to that place alone? What do you mean, responsible? Well, I'm responsible because Ted Gordon knew who murdered Pierre Coudray. And whoever that person was followed Gordon out to his apartment and sealed his lips by murder. Oh, but Chameleon, you shouldn't feel... No, 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 no. There's no need to tell me that I'm not responsible, Commissioner. It's no good. But I tell you, I will get the killer. And when I do, it won't be as Mr. Chameleon. But as... You mean you're going into disguise? (sighs) Yes, yes. In disguise as Larry O'Brien, an inspector for the gas company looking for leaks in the pipes. And disguised as Larry O'Brien, the gas inspector... What do you hope to find? The murder gun that somebody hid somewhere. And the murderer who hid it. Gee, Mr. Chameleon, if the commissioner hadn't tipped me off by phone that you were going to turn up as a gas man, I'd never have known you. Easy, Dave. My name is Larry O'Brien. And uh, you stick behind me. And act suspicious of me. I've got you, Mr. Chameleon. The uh, gas inspector, huh? Well, your card looks okay. I'll let you in. Who is this man, Detective Sergeant Arnold? I, uh, I'm a special inspector from the gas company. Larry O'Brien's my name. You, you're Wentworth, I guess. What do you want? But I, I've got orders to inspect all the gas grates in this house for leaks. There have been a lot of explosions lately, the company wants to check up. Well, there's only one gas grate in this house, and it's not leaky. Well, I'm sorry I can't take your word for that, mister. I've got to, got to say it for myself. It's in my daughter's room, and she's not well. I'll bet there's a gas leak in the room she's in. That's what's making her sick. Oh, that's stupid. She's not ill from any gas I'd leak. better let the guy in, Mr. Wentworth. I'll stick right with him. I don't like his looks. Oh, you don't, don't you? Well, that's too bad. What you don't like, don't worry me. Come on, show me that gas grate. The lady may be as asphyxiated before we get up there. Come on, then, wise guy. I'll take you up. Yeah. Dave, when we get to Tina's room, tell her that Ted Gordon has been murdered and get her out of the room. Okay, but what are you looking for, Mr. Chameleon? I got a hunch the murder gun is in her luggage. Oh, so she's the one. Knock on the door, Dave. Come in. It's an inspector from the gas company, Miss Tina. He wants to test the grate in your room for leaks. It'll only take a minute, lady. 
Uh, Miss Tina, I've got bad news for you. Bad news? Come on down the hall and I'll tell you there's no point in letting this guy hear us. We'll go into the front room. Now, what is the bad news, Detective Sergeant Arnold? Ted Gordon has been murdered. Murdered? Oh, no. No, not Ted. It can't be true. Oh, I loved him so. Mr. Chameleon's working on the case now. He says he knows who killed him. Where's my father? Mr. Chameleon doesn't suspect him, does he? I can't say, Miss Tina. He didn't tell me who. Hey, lady. I'll finish with the gas, Grant. There's no leak. It's perfectly safe. Oh, it's a gas man, Miss Tina. Oh, yes, I'll, I'll go back to... What's that in that man's hand? You, gas man, what's that in your hand? The gun that killed your husband, Tina. Well, you're not the gas man. You're Mr. Chameleon. Dave, take her downstairs in the living room. Get her father down there, too. And is uh, Clarissa Walter still in the house? Mr. Chameleon, you can't accuse me of murdering Ted Gordon. I loved him. And I didn't kill Pierre, either. I found the gun in your traveling case, Tina. Dave, take her downstairs. Father! Father! Here I am, Tina. What's happened now? Oh, Father! Tina, darling, what's wrong? Mr. Chameleon found the gun that killed Pierre in my luggage, Clarissa. Oh, how terrible. But where is Mr. Chameleon? He's disguised as this gas man. That's how he sneaked into my room. I have here a gun, a murder weapon, and I have a handkerchief scented with midnight gardenia perfume. A lady's handkerchief. And Tina, Mr. Chameleon found them in your luggage? Oh, why didn't you have sense enough to throw them away? Because you didn't know they were there, Clarissa. You didn't know because you, Clarissa Walters, planted them there. That's a lie. I saw Tina put them there myself. Clarissa, what are you saying? And that's not all I saw, Mr. Chameleon. I saw her kill Pierre with my own eyes. Clarissa? She pulled a gun out of her traveling coat pocket and shot him. I'll kill you for this, Clarissa. Dave, Dave hold it. Quiet, quiet, quiet oh, Carlisle. I've got him, Mr. Chameleon. Clarissa Walters, I arrest you for the murders of Pierre Coudre and of Ted Gordon. Not before I kill you, Chameleon. Don't move, Clarissa. I don't want to shoot down a woman. Dave, take your gun away. No. Give me that. All right, drop it. There. Good. Now, I'll tell you how and why you did this. Yes, tell me. You were insanely jealous of Pierre Coudray. When he chucked you out to marry Tina, you set out to kill him, and you used this gun which you stole from Ted Gordon. But you made the mistake of leaving your perfumed handkerchief with it. It's all a lie, chameleon. You faked a social background to me, the lady from Pittsburgh. You told me that you knew a family named Burton who were killed in a motor car accident. No such people ever existed. What's that got to do with it? You left this house with the murder gun, followed Ted Gordon to his apartment, where I made the dreadful mistake of letting him go alone, and you killed him in cold blood. I was never near Ted Gordon's apartment. Dave? Yes, sir. Bring the superintendent of Ted Gordon's building in, please. Come in now, Mr. Blackman. Yes, sir. Mr. Blackman, you are the superintendent of 11 East 1st Avenue? I am, Mr. Chameleon. And you again identify this woman as the one you saw leaving Ted Gordon's apartment at 4.45 this afternoon? Uh, she's the woman, just as I said she was from her picture. He's a liar! No. Just a witness for the prosecution, Clarissa Walters. Dave, take her along. Have her booked for first-degree murder. And with these words, Mr. Chameleon concludes tonight's murder case. There's nothing as important as fast relief when you have an ordinary headache, neuritic, or neuralgic pain. And millions who want very fast relief use Bayer Aspirin. For Bayer Aspirin is ready to go to work almost instantly. Within two seconds after you take it, it starts to disintegrate, and that's why relief comes so quickly. Remember this, and remember, too, that Bayer Aspirin is one thing you can take with complete confidence. We say this because no other pain reliever can match Bayer Aspirin's record of use by millions of normal people without ill effect. So for fast, reliable relief from headache or the pains of neuritis or neuralgia, use genuine Bayer Aspirin. And when you buy, ask for it by its full name, Bayer Aspirin, never by the name Aspirin alone. Get the 100-tablet bottle and you get Bayer Aspirin tablets for less than a penny apiece. (laughs) 
Listen next Wednesday night at this same time for Mr. Chameleon, the man of many faces in The Case of Murder and the Smoking Gun. The part of Mr. Chameleon is played by Carl Swenson and is written by Frank Hummert. Music directed by Victor Arden. Your announcer is Howard Claney. Now at last, you can get an utterly new, radically different, incredibly better toothpaste. It's revolutionary new Lion's toothpaste, and it's better because thousands of laboratory tests on scores of individual teeth show that it actually gets teeth brighter. Two and a half to five and a half times brighter than any of the five leading brands, brighter by far than any other toothpaste. New Lion's toothpaste does this because it's a new kind of toothpaste with a formula that's completely new, radically different. A toothpaste that cleans without soap, polishes without chalk. Try it. Buy Lion's Toothpaste. Listen for Mr. Chameleon in The Case of Murder and the Smoking Gun next Wednesday night at this time. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. Welcome back. I think we're beginning to get into the more superfluous uses of Mr. Chameleon's talents. If a police officer wants to search your room, they get a warrant. They don't have to put on makeup and use a silly accent. I don't know, maybe they should. Also, Mr. Chameleon arrived in minutes, and the victim had been married less than an hour before. Which makes me wonder if there is, like, a quick service subscription that people can get for NYPD service. Also, I loved how Dave Arnold fumbled the explanation of Mr. Chameleon's slogan. That got just so beautifully tangled and was without a doubt the best part of the episode. I also liked when Mr. Chameleon showed up and the father said of the murder, this is an unbelievable thing, and Mr. Chameleon just said really quickly, most murders are. It's really subtle, but it's one of those little jabs at the absurdity of the whole thing that shows a nice bit of self-awareness. Well, now we turn to listener comments and feedback, and we go to YouTube with some comments on the Rich Uncle murder case, and we start with Catherine, who writes, Great episode! Did I miss it, or did Mr. Chameleon not use his catchphrase this episode? Uh, I think that's possible. Now, we have heard later episodes just because of when some of these uncirculated episodes came into circulation, and by that time, reference to the catchphrase slash slogan is gone. And I don't know, maybe Dave Arnold killed it. We'll have to see with next week's episode, but by the time you get into 1950, it's not a thing at all. And then we have a comment from Betsy, who writes, Good one. I love the bad guys in it. They are deliciously evil. And then Aronza wrote, I think listening to old-time radio is a very interesting look at our society in the 40s. Could Mr. Chameleon make it as a popular entertainment in today's society? But it played for many years back then. Well, thanks so much. And I think that is an interesting observation. Mr. Chameleon ran for five years, which is longer than a lot of series that are more popular with modern day audiences. It ran for about the same length of time as Sam Spade. The Adventures of Philip Marlowe with Gerald Moore was on the air for two years plus a summer series. Nero Wolf was only on the air for six months, The New Adventures of Nero Wolf. And, of course, the longest-running radio series, outside of perhaps The Adventures of Sherlock Holmes, was Mr. Keen, Tracer of Lost Persons, which ran for more than uh, 17 years. And both these shows enjoyed very solid ratings, both Mr. Keen and Mr. Chameleon. 
Now, of course, it's possible to reach the wrong conclusion from that data alone and kind of just even judge the audience of these type of programs, just in the same way as people who today enjoy Hallmark movies. But I think like the Hallmark films, these programs definitely filled a specific need for something to enjoy that isn't too complex, just kind of relaxing. And if you get have to get caught away for a second, you're not going to get caught up on the plot. Now, People will often complain about Frank and Ann Hummer, but whatever you accuse them of, you can't say they didn't know their audience's needs and that they didn't know how to fill them. Uh, They produced so many programs that ran for more than 10 years and some that ran for upwards of 20 years that they knew what they were doing. And while these aren't all to my taste, you have to uh, appreciate that. So thanks so much for the comment. Now it's time to thank our Patreon supporter of the day. And I want to go ahead and thank Mike. Mike has been one of our Patreon supporters since July of 2015, currently supporting the podcast at the rookie level of $2 or more per month. Thank you so much for your support, Mike. And that will do it for today. If you are enjoying the podcast, please follow us using your favorite podcast software. We'll be back next Thursday with another episode of Mr. Chameleon. But join us back here tomorrow for yours truly, Johnny Dollar, and the conclusion of The Star of Cape Town Matter, where... Mr. Dollar. Uh, Oh, Helen. I'd like to talk to you. Oh, no, that's a switch. What do you mean? Ever since I got aboard this ship, I've been trying to talk to you... But you weren't having any. I don't know what this is all about. But you've gone too far, Mr. Dollar. Come again? Don't try to pretend. When I found my room all torn up just now, I realized... Oh, hey, wait a minute. Your room's been torn up too? What do you mean by two? Mine got the same treatment a while ago. I don't understand. I thought it was you who... Look, Helen, I think you and I had better have a little talk right now. I hope you'll be with us then. In the meantime, do send your comments to box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and check us out on Instagram, instagram.com slash great detectives from Boise, Idaho. This is your host, Adam Graham, signing off.